it's a great honor and a great pleasure and a great privilege to, to be here. Uh, and this is what I'm going to be talking about this morning. Um, unfortunately, I don't speak Polish, so really this is what I'm going to be talking about this morning. Um, oh. Which way does this have to point? Or maybe not. Hold on. Oh, hold on, it's pointing the wrong way. I'm sorry, technology has been... Ah, excellent, there we go. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm a guy, I can't multitask. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, drafting flexibilities in copyright, Irish lessons for Europe. And there are lots of processes ongoing in the digital single market um, reforms to, uh, to bring copyright up to date. Now, two years ago, it looked like there was going to be a comprehensive revision of the entire European copyright program. Now it seems that there are going to be uh, only three main issues covered, and the sorts of things that I want to talk about today are not going to be covered in it, and I think that's unfortunate. Uh, as with Ian Hargreaves, who spoke um, before the break, uh, I chaired a copyright review in Ireland, which was established just after Ian, and we kind of marched a little behind, well, we limped a little behind. Uh, we were established in May uh, 2011. We published a consultation paper. On foot of the consultation paper, we had a widespread consultation process online, um, 100 questions, uh, and at the end of that, we published a, uh, a report, Modernizing Copyright. Um, unlike Ian, uh, who decided there would only be 10 recommendations, we decided there would only be one. We recommended a bill. We drafted the, 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 the reform legislation that we thought would best implement all of the issues that we thought needed covering. And our recommendation was simple, implement the bill. Um, the process that we undertook was a process of examining all of the responses from the copyright community. And there were very many responses from a whole range of interests. Not just, not just the interests of authors or creators, but the interests of collecting societies and associations, the interests of intermediaries, the interests of um, users, uh, that is to say, uh, the primary focus of CopyCamp, uh, the interests of innovation and entrepreneurs. As with Ian, our, rec our terms of reference asked us to, to make recommendations around uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. And finally, the interests of what we called heritage, galleries, libraries, archives, museums, and educational institutions. These were driven by all of the responses that we got in our public meetings, our consultation process, and so on. Um, and we felt that it was very important to try and get a balance between them. As Ian said, a great deal of the conversation around copyright is driven by the perception of the content industry seeing copyright as a business model. And most of the uh, recommendations around reform um, tend to run into the interests of the copyright content industry's business models. Um, uh, if you take a look at the screen, you will see that although uh, the top left is the business model, the rest isn't. The rest is all the other interests in copyright, and we felt that it was important to get a balance around all of those interests. The way we suggested that balance was the we recommended a, uh, a copyright council, not unlike your digital council. This is the first Council of State sitting in Ireland in 1938, uh, and we felt that uh, a Copyright Council was one way to draw all of the interests together. Um, and Ian's last point, let's find a way to keep copyright reform ongoing so the legislation stays up to date. Well, a Copyright Council that was charged with ensuring the protection and ongoing reform of copyright was one way of doing that. So that was our first recommendation. And we recommended, this is the lower house of the Irish Parliament, and we recommended a bill to implement all of our ideas. Now, the European process, which was um, started after uh, Ian's process finished and just as ours was finishing, um, also identified similar 
a similar range of groups, including right at the top there, end users and consumers. Um, and that's what I'm going to focus on today. Now, Ian's process has been, broadly speaking, implemented on the copyright um, end user side. Uh, ours hasn't. Um, when you present governments with a take it or leave it option, uh, they might just choose to leave it. And the Irish government minister uh, who was interested in this got moved to another department and in the last 18 months things have stalled. However, just this week, this man is a, an independent senator representing Trinity College Dublin, which you can see in the background. His name is Sean Barrett. Um, uh, and he has introduced into the Senate, which is our upper house, um, a bill based on our bill, um, uh, making one significant change, which I will come to in a moment. Now, for the purposes of CopyCamp and for the purposes of um, Irish possible influences on the European debate, uh, as Ian said, there's a whole range of exceptions uh, in the European Directive, which many countries haven't implemented, we, like Ian, recommended that the whole range of exceptions should be implemented as a matter of Irish law. The European process to 18 months ago um, uh, was going to suggest making the exceptions mandatory. At the moment, states can choose whether or not to implement the exceptions, um, and Ireland, like the UK, has implemented only very few of them. Uh, unlike the UK, which has implemented most of them now, we still haven't. Um, the argument in favour of letting different states do different things is kind of like in the tax situation, where the uh, rules are harmonised, but tax rates are a matter of national policy. Similarly, uh, exceptions can be set out as possibilities but implemented as a matter of national policy. Uh, and one of the exceptions that we chose to look at uh, relates to adaptation. This is an adapter. We, s we have seen today that the technology doesn't always work. This is an example of the technology that I took a while to understand. That is the bane of my life, the adapter from my Mac to the rest of the world's uh, VGA. Um, and we recommended a whole range of adaptation-related exceptions, which we felt were justified by decisions of the Court of Justice in um, cases that have reached, uh, the most recent one is the UPC uh, Vienna case, and cases in the Court of Human Rights uh, relating to uh, Ashby in France, which was a, a case involving uh, photographs of Paris Fashion Week. Now, um, one of the uh, exceptions that we recommended related to innovation. Um, we think that there is space within the European acquis to be flexible. Um, and if we were asked, uh, uh, sorry, there is space within the European acquis to be flexible. And since we were asked to make recommendations around innovation and entrepreneurship, we suggested that it was possible to draft an exception specifically for that purpose. We were also asked whether to, uh, in to, to uh, contemplate introducing a specific exception like the US fair use exception. And we suggested that that uh, wasn't going to work, uh, and we suggested instead the introduction of an Irish version, which we continued to call fair use. Um, built on the existing exceptions, um, which would be examples of fair use, um, uh, that they must be considered before getting to any uh, further exceptional analysis, um, and the existing exceptions can be the basis of an analogy uh, from which to build a new exception within fair use. Um, we recommended that uh, uh, a range of factors should be taken into account one of which is uh, the burn three-step test, which we're going to hear about later, uh, that takes into account not just the exception, but the interests of the uh, rights holder as well. Australia made a similar recommendation around the same time, um, and unlike Ian's and very like ours, the government said thanks, but no thanks. Um, now, uh, back to my colleague, Senator Sean Barrett, who has introduced our bill into the Senate this week. 
um, he felt that the language of fair use is unfortunate. Uh, a language of balance, a language of engaging with the reasonable expectations of users is better language, he said. So he suggested um, that it should be called reasonable dealing and said an exception uh, on the basis of reasonable dealing. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. I'm happy to adopt the new language if the government adopts the bill. We need a safety valve in copyright. We have cases in the US which uh, demonstrate the importance of the safety valve. It can be introduced into the European directive process very easily. Exceptions in favor of balance can easily be drafted. Uh, that's what lawyers are for, and I'm sorry to say I am a lawyer. Uh, I, I know it's a terrible confession in, a, in, in, in this group today, but I do think we can get the copyright balance right. Thank you very much. <laughs>